In this Northern Brewer video, the fun finale to our distillation video project, where we finally get to taste some of the neutral and flavored spirits we produced on three different still setups. We're joined once again by Ilya from RAR BSG to sample through two flights of spirits. One set was infused with different still spirits flavorings, dry gin, whiskey, and Aussie gold rum. The other includes bottles that were conditioned for a few months on small oak spirals. As part of this flight, we also get a quick technical lesson on the process of barrel and wood aging spirits. If this is your first time seeing a video from this series, please check out our full playlist linked in the video description below for more videos documenting our entire process. From producing sugar and malt washes here at NBHQ, then distilling them at RAR Technical Center, through a primer on evaluating and blending cuts to this final flavoring and tasting. What's going on everybody? It's Chip Walton here at lovely Northern Brewer World Headquarters. I'm here with co-worker William and cohort Ilya, our partner in this long distilling project that you've been seeing over the last couple of months. We are here to finally enjoy the fruits of our labors before us. And also off screen, we have a plethora oh, of spirits, uh, both kind of straight or what would you call it, neutral form, and then flavored both with still spirits, top shelf flavorings, or some have been flavored with different chars of wood spiral, depending on what kind of spirit it was. First up, these are all sugar wash distilled on the T500 condenser column. It's such like a family tree of what we've done over the last couple of months. Sometimes I'm like, wait a minute. That's right. Sugar wash through the T500. We essentially have a vodka, the straight, mm -hmm. a dry gin flavored with a uh, top shelf dry gin, a whiskey and a gold rum. Also both flavored with uh, top shelf spirits. Yeah, we should just for the point of process work just a little backwards. So these were all neutral. We put them in seven 50 milliliter bottles and then they got hit uh, dosed with the top shelf um, spirit uh, flavoring. In this case, those look like a mini shot bottle, but each bottle is three bottles worth of flavoring. Exactly, you're getting a 50 milliliter bottle of top shelf uh, still spirits essence or flavoring. And that 50 milliliters is going to be split three ways. There's a handy little line at each third divider. So as you're pouring them, it's really easy to tell when to stop pouring into each 750. So as we were filling the bottles, we had to be just a little careful to make sure we left enough room for displacement, but we're not talking exactly huge, maybe right at the bottom of the shoulder. And your thoughts, Ilya, I'm going to lean on you a lot. I know you don't think you're a professional, but... No, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I thought the vodka was really neutral, very smooth, very easy, uh, really very flavorless, and as you'd expect a good clean vodka to be. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Uh, no solvent, solventy notes, no uh, weird flavors, just like a normal commercial vodka. I think we actually ended up diluting this one to 40 or 42 percent or so. So very straightforward, exactly what you'd expect. I really like the sweetness. It is alcohol sweetness in it because we didn't add sugar or anything. Yep. There is that sweetness to it. Yeah. So next, I'm going to try the gin. The dry gin. The nose is potent. I get kind of juniper-y, uh, piney. I get that up front, and then I actually get a surprising amount of citrus out of this. This is pretty good, especially being the gin is not my favorite spirit. Um, again, nice, smooth. It, it's a little bit more hot. There's a little bit more of that evaporative hit, heat that I'm getting from this one. But other than that, you know, again, gin's not my favorite thing, but uh, smooth, easy little citrus on the finish especially and kind of a nice piney juniper front, front end. nothing overly complex gin is my thing i want to dump it into a keg with a bunch of uh, seltzer or something and just have a bit gin and tonic good. type thing on mm -hmm. tap onto the whiskey indeed a little water to cleanse the palate the aroma is amazing with that oak quality in there mm -hmm. coming from a flavor you smell like barrel aged in there the aroma is nice it has a Definitely an oak character. It also gets a little bit of that, like, for me, it has a little bit of that clovey kind of spicy note to it. Yeah, almost a cinnamon or something, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wrong pipe, wrong pipe. <laughs> oh. I just inhaled that. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Don't inhale whiskey. <laughs> That's what I was going to say is clovey, cinnamony, that sort of one. Takes me back to when we were running the pot still out and you picked up on that cinnamon on one of the cuts. Like right. It's that same uh, aroma flavor. Yep. A really coat the palate with sweetness. You know how whiskey can do that? You can get that sweet sort of a coating. I think the caramel maybe in the finish too. Yeah, definitely that. I think the spice stays on the, on the nose. Doesn't come through flavor-wise. Flavor, you get some oak and you get some of that kind of um, sweet caramel, you know. Again, not an overly complex whiskey, but a really nice American grain whiskey type character. All right, a quick water palate cleanser and we're moving on to the gold rum mm -hmm. flavored spirit. The nose is immediately vanilla. Maybe vanilla more. and sweetness right away. Right, I almost um, thought like honey, almost kind of like mead-like sweetness. Oh, I get in the way. Cane sugar. What's that? The D, the D matra or the uh, Demerara? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. I actually get that aroma from it. It's not nearly as sweet as the aroma. Yeah, this would be good in a rum and coke. I Absolutely. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, rum is not exactly a, a beverage I have a ton of experience with, but this is tasty. Very pronounced vanilla on the nose, light sweetness, light sweetness on the palate as well. I think all of these ended up being a really nice example. Um, you know, we didn't make a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey, you know, mm -hmm. or a hundred dollar bottle of rum, mm -hmm. but certainly great, easy going simple examples of the drink they're meant to be yeah. flavored and uh really you know surprising for a little bottle of essence quite yeah. good tasting them also makes you kind of want to play with them in beer in some sort of fashion like oh i'm I, sure this whiskey you can get a whiskey barrel aged beer pretty easily i, I bet i bet oh. that 50 mils in a five gallon batch yeah would add a nice note oh. especially if you had like a if you already had all that sugar of like a stout mm -hmm. yep and then maybe you put some touch of oak on it, say the same spirals, mm -hmm. maybe the, you know, the carboy version thereof, yeah. and drop this whiskey in there. The whiskey flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Drop this whiskey flavoring into that beer and probably be pretty delicious. Yeah. All right, let's palate cleanse, maybe eat a cracker, we'll reset, we'll come back, and we're going to try what? I think we should uh, try compare the different spirits flavored with the same char three oak. Okay. So we have uh, sugar wash distilled both on the air still and the T500, and we have the malt wash distilled on the pot still attachments, and we flavored each of those with a 750 bottle uh, single dose uh, char three spiral. And so it'd be nice to compare, you know, white spirit, proved down to 40% from each of the machines, flavored in the same way. And see what we can, if we can tell the difference, if the oak takes over it. Um, and I think if it, the oak does take over it, then we should do the 40%, essentially vodka from each side by side and see if we can tell the difference without it. Mm. All right, break. Here, flight number two is all of the char number three. Char number three being a reference to the toastedness of the oak spirals that went into these neutral spirits, right? Sort of, yeah. I mean, it's basically um, the difference between char and toast is exposing to heat versus exposing to flame. Oh. So this wood would have been actually exposed to flame and charred versus you could take a piece of oak and toast it in heat and it wouldn't mm. look burned but you would still get some of those flavor compounds forming from the heat. Thus, medium toast, medium plus, char number. Boom, boom, exactly. Boom. Okay, so this exactly. has been burnt, which is why there's little bits of ash. Yes. Like kind of sear, you know, that would get filtered out if this was a more professional product. Um, we've tasted, we started tasting them, then Ilya was getting so in-depth and technical that I was like, hold on, we have to start from scratch again. So let's start with the T500 char number three. You've already tasted it. Kind of tell us mm -hmm. your impression. On the nose, uh, you get a lot of the oak character. You get a little vanilla, you get a little sweetness, you get a little spice. Uh, when you taste it, 
you can tell it's still pretty hot. It's still pretty young. This didn't spend a whole lot of time on oak. It was a couple months in a bottle with a spiral. Mm -hmm. um, you can obviously tell it's getting on its way. The flavor's developing here. Uh, but unlike in a barrel, there's not a lot of oxygen ingress. There's not a lot of surface area exposure for the time. And so it's still pretty young. But you, you can tell uh, the experiment is on its way. I was very impressed by it, considering it's basically vodka with a yeah. tiny spiral in it. I'm like, that would, I would not have guessed that's what that started yeah. as. That's a nice little sweet note to it. I mean, it's, it's almost starting to get to that point where the ones that were flavored with the liquid flavoring, which are very impactful, I'm like, I would believe maybe that's even one of those. It's not meant to be too impactful, strong. Sure. And I mean, you know, when I say better than I expected it to be, I expected it to be more like vodka. The vodka we tasted mm -hmm. before was nice, clean, simple, nothing to it. It was vodka. I expected less flavor and less, for it to be less on its way toward more of a whiskey flavor profile. What about number two from the air still? It's less sweet, I would say, in the bow. It doesn't finish with that. Now, when you think about going back, you're like, oh yeah, I do taste the sweet neutral spirit more. I mean, less in this one, because I feel like we're starting to get woodier even, a little earthy. Yeah, I pick up a little bit more on the base spirit, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little, uh, for me, it's a little more uh, clean sweet. It's not as much, like I don't get as much vanilla, I don't get as much spice, um, which is odd. I, c I could not tell you why that is. Um, they're both pretty nice and neutral spirits to start with. But yeah, this seems to have gone a little bit of a longer way forward on the oak than this has. Although you do get a little bit of it, mm -hmm. but it's not nearly as pronounced. Less vanilla, less spice, mm -hmm. but a similar amount of sweetness. And you can tell that it's, you know, obviously you can tell from the color. Yeah. You can tell there's some oak to it. I'm feeling, yeah, I'm just getting like the wood, woodiness, kind of like I said, earthiness. These things that aren't necessarily those more elegant flavors that you might often get. Not that it's all the way there, but the sweetness yep. does have a fruity note to it. Mm. Something stone fruit, peach, something like that. And then when we were laying these out and we smelled the third sample, which is from the pot still, we kind of, William called an audible and moved it to the back of the flight because we could, even by nose alone, we knew that there was... Oh yeah, a you can smell the grain. The first two were distilled from corn sugar. So we're talking about essentially a vodka flavored. This is actually a whiskey mash distilled and then flavored on oak. And it, I mean, haven't tasted it yet, but it smells a lot more like what a corn distillate would taste like or a grain distillate would taste like. Flavor matches what you were just saying. Like you get what <laughs> you're expecting or, or these feel like without that, that grain character and they fall just a little flat because you're looking at it, you're thinking, at least I'm expecting like a whiskey flavor from them. Mm -hmm. And they fall flat without that grain character. Mm -hmm. You're getting the oak, which is really nice, but not, nothing else. We just has the grain to round it out. So, to me, you get the grain character in the spirit. It's a little less clean sweetness and a little more actual grain character to it. But because of that, the oak is nowhere near as pronounced. You get nearly as much vanilla, nearly as much spice, um, a light sweetness to it. But again, this one. I think it would do great if it sat on that spiral for another few months. And you were explaining to us uh, about the intensity of both the distillate, but also how the relationship with a true barrel would affect these, or more time on sure. that, but more importantly, the way these are produced most often professionally is uh, in barrel. The first two were a corn sugar one. And they're both distilled pretty high up. If I remember correctly, we were somewhere around 91, 92% on the T500. And we got up into the mid 80% on the second round on the Aristotle. So it's already a neutral ferment, uh, distilled pretty high up. And so percent ethanol by volume is much higher. And so it's a much more cleaner, you know, the, the, the farther up you go, the closer to vodka, neutral alcohol it is. Right. Um, whereas the grain only distilled down to or up to rather would have been somewhere in the mid 60s to mid 70s 
uh, is what the proof of what we ended up keeping would have been, uh, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, and, and then we also brought in some of the heads cuts, some of the tails, right, uh, to bring in some of those more flavorful compounds mm -hmm. uh, that'll bring in a lot of the materials that would then, over time, masterfy you know, essentially flavor active compounds that would change in the barrel into some of the more delicate flavors over time with exposure to oxygen, which brings me to the next point. In the bottle, not a lot of oxygen ingress, as well as because it's not sitting in a barrel as the seasons change and the wood expands and contracts, sucking in and pushing out spirit through a layer of char, essentially a carbon filter of sorts. Um, so a lot of those flavors would change um, there evaporation would happen depending on the humidity in the air, either alcohol or water would evaporate. So there's a lot of change of flavor that happens in a barrel for this multitude of reasons that this hasn't had the chance to undergo. And these wouldn't have really had the chance to undergo because they're pretty clean ethanol. So a lot of those compounds that would do that wouldn't have been there to begin with, there. right? So we really are talking about a different sort of flavoring here, right? We take a neutral spirit, Diluted down to forty percent, and expose it to a little bit of oak, which is going to be way different than taking, you know, a moderate to high proof spirit with a lot of flavor compounds, flavor active compounds, mm. put it in the barrel, allow it to concentrate or dilute over time, allow it to breathe. Um, then they dilute that down. They proof that down right. after the barrel, and then right. it goes so to a bottle. Okay. If in your rickhouse, uh, where your barrels are stored, um, it's human then what evaporates is alcohol. If it's dry, then what evaporates is water. And so it, you'll know over time as your facility operates um, what happens in your house. But initially, you aren't exactly going to know what you're going to pull out of the bear, right? How strong and how much volume you're going to have. So long story short, this is not barrel aging. This is flavoring spirits that we made in a small setting or not in a small setting but in a small vessel like a bottle on a little bit of oak and we're really trying to figure out what we can do to approximate or come close to creating whiskeys or different flavored spirits here with more so, time on that oak spiral will these ever kind of get to that point that the essence version of flavoring would i think so they, yeah um the essence probably has a lot of stuff in it that isn't oak, mm -hmm. right? And so will it be the same? No. Right. Will it become more intense, more oaky? Uh, yes. This sort of stuff is more about fun and experimenting and seeing what you can do than saying, I'm going to make a whiskey like X, my favorite whiskey producer, right? They've got that figured out. They make that thing. You can go get that thing. This is about experimenting and trying out flavoring. Also, right, uh, one of the most important things about distillation is actually fermentation. Because that's where a lot of these flavor active compounds are created. The yeast is what makes all of the flavors, they just haven't become those flavors. Those mm. compounds haven't become those flavors. And so not only is this about flavoring the spirit you made, it's also about fine tuning your fermentation to create exactly what it is that you want to concentrate and then flavor or manipulate in this way or that. Wow. There's so many things. Yeast. I mean, the ingredients, magic. the fermentation, then how you barrel it, the aging, like the transfer. There's, it almost seems hard to dial in where in your process you want to make a change to affect the end result that you might want. But I'm sure that's... It's, a, it's something that comes with practice, I think. We have about a dozen other bottles we could taste, but I think we've had a nice sampling of samples uh, over these two flights. We've heard a lot of technical info from Ilya about the many processes that need to come together for a spirit to be good, but we also tasted really quick ways to go about it through both kind of liquid flavorings, oak spirals. I think we've kind of all agreed it might be better to just like come back two or three months from now as well because these are products that should evolve with age so i think we're gonna cut drink some water maybe have some crackers <laughs> thank you so much for walking yeah. us through this uh for just like holding our hand you are yoda you're our guru <laughs> no, of distillation oh it was so cool to finally do this project after years of 
kind of wondering how to pull it off, like to be able to come to RAR, see it on a decently yeah. large scale, small scale in a large facility, I guess I should say. Um, we all picked our, our f personal favorites out of the batch for our closing cheers. Tell me what you guys ended up with. I took the 90% uncut. Oh, <laughs> gin. <laughs> I ended up with the um, malt wash with an oak or with a char three oak spiral in it um, because it has the most uh, grainy and sort of a malt whiskey flavor developing in it. I ended up with the dark rum. I think it's very almost classic. Uh, that vanilla, a little bit of that creme creme brulee, a little bit of those spices. Um, but I, it's hard to believe that that's from a small dose of flavorings in a 750 bottle. Should be said, if somebody just wants to buy a still spirit little flavoring bottle, they can just add that to vodka, right? Or add it to vodka. Um, if you're in a state that sells Everclear, you can buy some Everclear, cut it down and Go flavor Wisconsin. stuff. Um, you can try adding it to your beer like we talked about. Yeah. You, yeah. Someone actually told me they, they took one of those and uh, flavored really inexpensive vodka i'll put it that way vodka you normally wouldn't drink and they were impressed that like it turned it into a really good bottle i don't remember the flavor i want to say whiskey but they're like took crappy vodka and made it really good whiskey they were excited and happy about it, which was pretty cool that's awesome tons of links in the video description not only our massive distilling project uh the playlist for all those videos but distillation equipment ingredients available at northernbrewer.com other resources until two or three or four months from now, if you see us again, from World HQ Northern Brewer, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Ilya. Thanks for holding our hand. It was a fun summer. Yeah. yeah. This one Indeed. time at distillation camp, right?